There's a certain level of cruelty that only a group of children can muster. When one is made to wear a retainer brace at age eight, it was surely an unpleasant sight, the metal headgear wrapped around her face. There are lots of stories about the night of her ninth birthday sleepover. Kids say she willed her metal brace into massive jaws, incising her way through the house. But it was no fault of her own. Mandible Judy isn't a nice name for a quiet little girl. Okay, one more time. Hedgy? Playing it wrong or something? Casey, come on. I need to do that one a few more times at least. <sighs> the damn frog thing again. Man, you're obsessed with that thing. You know, when we get interviewed on MTV, you can tell them all about your weird thing for frogs. They'll eat it up. But right now, we need to rehearse. Casey. Casey. Here she is. Judy Caterback. I've come to set you free. <laughs> See? I brought our buddies with me. Oh my god! And my dad loaned me his truck, and it's the weekend. Casey! Huh. What the hell, man? Are you deaf? Uh... All right. I'm having a smoke outside. Casey, what's going on? You're freaking us out. Yeah. Uh, sorry. My friend Kenny is, is in trouble. Yeah, you told me. He took off in his dad's truck, right? Well, have you heard from him then? Yeah, uh, sort of. I want to help him out, but I don't know how to find him. Well, maybe you can go see his dad. He might have an idea, no? Well, his dad doesn't really like me. I don't know. Well, you won't let that stop you if it's that important. Go talk to him. You'll feel better, I bet. Come on, let's get some air. Get me Amanda Specker. It's Dr. Gabili. Come on, Bon. It's better if we wait out here. Just hang in there. What could make someone do that? She's not the sweet nine-year-old I knew anymore. There's more at stake now than bringing Fuzzy to justice. Bonnie, inside, with all that going on, I, I felt weird. Like, like time stopped. Look, is that them driving that truck? Yeah, I, I think it is. That's an East Haddam police car. Hold it! Stop the truck and get out! Dead? Oh my god, they ran him down! Dad, oh no! Son. What are you doing here? Never mind that now, Dad. We have to get you to a hospital. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll get an ambulance. 
Officer Mazanti, try to lay still. It's patrolman. Dad, she went to call an ambulance. Just hang on. We'll, we'll get you out of here. Son, I'm sorry. Dad, not now. I, I have to tell you something. You, you need to hear it. I'm sorry I was such a lousy father. Your mother and I, we... We just... Dad, please, just save your strength. Rin, Pyo, Toe... What the, the hell are you doing? It's a ninjutsu healing incantation. I need to do this. Rin, Pyo, Toe, Sha... Son, listen, Kai, I... Jin. I was trying to make you more like me. Retsu. Zai. God, what kind of example am I? Zen. <laughs> Don't be like me, Marco. Rin. You're a good man. Be better. Pyo. You can do that for me, right? To. Dad. I love you. Please hang on. So much for our police escort. Hello, yes, Mr. Becker? It looks like we were too late. Kenny Howard has just left the hospital in his truck. Yes, we're following him. There's three down inside. Hold it! Sir, put the rocks down. No, leave us alone. Bo, oh, no, oh. darling. I can't lose you too. Sir, drop what you're holding and lay on the ground. Now. Please, Bo, <laughs> drop them. <laughs> I know, dearest. Judy. <laughs> I miss our sweet little girl, too. Down out on the street. I know. Jesus, there's blood everywhere. What the hell happened here? What happened? Mr. Becker. I... I don't know. I seem to have blacked out. She was just staring at the terrarium when I got here, which is consistent with the reactions we've been seeing to the rocks. Dr. Scafano, this is Connor Darcy. He's our geologist. Ah, oh, how embarrassing. Hello, Mr. Darcy. I'm sorry. I'm more charming when I haven't been hypnotized by lab animals, I swear. My god, what happened to the frogs? Yes, well, they gave us some new data to ponder. Here, let me clean this up. Uh, no. I need to examine the dead ones. I was running another audiology test with the synthesizer. I played a few new patches I created, and the last one... They really didn't like too much. They began tearing each other apart. I stopped it in time to save one of them. How strange. Have you seen this behavior before? We haven't, no. I think I'm starting to understand what's happening, though. The sonic phenomenon from the rocks is changing their development, making them more responsive to sounds. And it's giving them an uncanny mental connection to each other. Telepathic frogs, so I didn't dream that. The sound I made disturbed them, and the mental connection made a kind of feedback loop causing them to attack each other. Ah. Are you sure you're okay? Maybe you should sit down. Ah, uh, so strange. I keep getting these stray thoughts. Specific images. I was being shown something. An old hat? A hat? Right. And it was hidden under the floor somewhere. I was shown the hiding place. Shown by who? The, f the frogs? I... Uh... uh... Judy Caterbeck escaped from Westmore State Psychiatric Hospital this afternoon with an unknown accomplice in a truck. Kenny. At least four dead. Decapitated is what I'm told.
It's okay, Judy. I know what to do. Stay in the car. Put the rocks down. <laughs> I said... You can just go to sleep for a while. Thanks for tuning in to Season 2, Episode 8 of Mandible Judy. Our cast this week was Tamria Dow, Glenn Graber, John Constantine, Aaron Lillis, Lee Eddy, David Steele, Bonnie Bogovich, Nancy Graham, Ty Anderson, Lex Zorn, Graham Rowett, Mike Hall, Julia Nervi, Gabriel Hicks, and Chris Burke. Music is by Glomag. Follow Mandible Judy on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and please subscribe on iTunes or wherever you listen. We rely on support from our listeners, so please help us keep the series going at patreon.com slash mandiblejudy. 